So first of all, I'm going to just open up um, just a Dub CF test client tool just so that we can have a brief look and, and see what that web service looks like. So one, um, on the left hand side, there's a tree of all the methods that's available on, on that specific web service. And that basically um, allows for integration. We've got four main objects or four main business entities that we will work with. You will see methods around contacts, which is just a person um, registered for a specific account. Account, see that as a company or a, or a customer. Um, and we also have orders and order items. So a whole bunch of methods available via this DubCF web service uh, that allows integration uh, with that line of business system. If we then go and we execute as an example the get contact list, we can go and have a look at the data that comes back. So first of all here we can see that there is five records currently residing within that system. Now if we have a look at the first record here, we'll see that some of the data is fairly easy to work with because that is defined as simple types and returned as simple types within that web service and that's never really been a problem even with current capabilities in K2 to work with web service that returns uh, simple types. It did start to get interesting once you get into a scenario where a web service um, returns something like a complex type. So in this case, we see that this same get contactless method returns a customer and, or, or a contact and as part of the contact it returns the account that it is associated with and it's returning that as a complex type. And this is where it started to get interesting. Once you then get to a point where you need to work with this um, complex type, you sit in a scenario where you need to do a lot of string manipulation um, within workflows or within reports to actually get to a point where you can physically work with that data. So that's just quickly a definition of what that web service looked like. <clears throat> the next thing that we can do now is that we can actually take this web service and we can register it via the endpoint broker service that we have available. So I'll just grab the URL. And to register this service, um, you can do it via two tools. You can either go directly to K2 Workspace and register the service um, directly from there, or alternatively, you can use the Smart Object Service Tester tool, uh, which is a great tool to work with once you once you start working with web services. I'm going to use that uh, for the purposes of demonstration in this session. So first of all, we will go to the endpoint um, services that's available. And what you will see here is that there's, um, at this point, three available. To integrate with assemblies, integrate with DubCF, and then integrate with standard web services. Our current web service that we're going to make use of to integrate uh, with the Nalix uh, ERP system is basically um, a DubCF web service. So I'll start off by right-clicking on here and say I want to register a new service. In this case, <coughs> We'll put in the URL that points to the web service definition, and we'll put in or also specify the uh, endpoint URL. Once you're done with that, you can hit next, and now you can go and give some basic information for your service. So we'll call this demo one, and we'll make the display also simplify that a bit while making that demo one. At this point, we're ready to click Add. And what will happen now at this point is that um, the endpoint service will go and have a look at the definition of that web service. And it will go and get a list back of all the objects uh, or service objects that support it uh, with this web service that we have. So now if I go and have a look and I extend this a little bit, you will see that this maps back to what I showed you in the web service test client earlier. So on the left hand side, this is the methods that's exposed from the web service. On the right hand side here, you will see that for each one of those service methods, we basically then create or, or give you the ability to create a smart object for each one of those. So to make it easy, I'm going to right click on the service that we registered and I'm just going to say go and generate a set of smart objects from all the service objects that's available. So that's a set of objects that we will create. And once we've done that, I can move down to the Smart Object Explorer and under Endpoint WCF, uh, we will find Demo 1. So in Demo 1 here, we have a scenario where we have all the methods exposed in the form of a Smart Object. 
So if we go continue with the example that I showed previously, we can now go and say, okay, go and get contact list. Let's go and execute this smart object method and see what the data is that gets exposed. We don't have any inputs on this specific method. So if I execute that, I get a whole bunch of data back. If we scroll towards the end, let's ignore the first part for now. If I scroll towards the end, we can see here is the simple types that I showed you in the tester tool earlier. So you can see the account name, the account number, who the contact is, date created, email, and a whole bunch of different information about this. The complex type that got returned is in the form of account. So if we copy that real quick, and I just open up this in Notepad, we can dump that in there. And this is basically what the complex type looks like and what that is returned as. Now at this point of time, um, it is important that we also make capabilities available within this to make it easy so that you can actually work with this data. Because think about it, if you just have to pass this data into a workflow the way that it is here, you're going to come up with inter interesting and complex string manipulations to go and break these things out to understand, you know, the account number is five, the account status is active. So we've taken this a step further to provide you with a set of um, capabilities to easily be able to actually go and let's call it normalize this data to a point where it actually makes sense and that you can use it the way that you expect to use typical smart objects within K2. So for each of the complex types that we have available or that the web service return, we will also then go and create another set of smart objects. Um, so under object types, we will find that there is an account, a contact, an order, and an order item smart object. So within the definition of this web service, that is the four main uh, complex types that gets returned throughout the various methods that, that's available. So if I now go and have a look at the account uh, smart object, we can right click this, execute the smart object, and then you will see that there's a whole bunch of methods available. Now the value that I copied from the get contact method is basically a serialized um, data for the um, account smart object or for the account object complex type that's returned. So if I go and select the deserialized method as an example and we paste it in here, What you will find now is executing this method will go and deserialize the data and give it to you um, in a flat format like this. So a typical way where you will expect a property with a specific value. Why I point this out is just that um, we didn't leave it at the point where it, uh, complex type gets returned and you need to deal with that with stream, string manipulation within the form or the workflow design that you're going to do. We took it one step further by providing a set of objects that will allow you to both serialize and deserialize the information. Serialize becomes important in scenarios where, as an example, um, you expect or you want to create an account within um, within the, the line of business system that's exposed via this web service. So here you will see again that account basically takes up a complex uh, or a serialized version of the account object and that's basically what the web service will work with. So this is one way of working with the, with the web, uh, with, with the methods and objects that's available within, um, within the, the web service that you registered as an endpoint. However, from a K2 perspective or, you know, from a best practice perspective, you can take this and go and pretty much, let's call it normalize um, the objects into something that makes, uh, that makes a little bit more sense um, and is closer to the way that we expect smart objects to look when we work with smart objects. So with that, I'm going to switch to K2 Designer and we're going to have a look here and see that I basically created four different smart objects. Okay, so let's go and have a look at the account smart object. So if I open up the account smart object in design view, you will notice that it's got a standard set of properties available. And then within this properties, let's go and have a look at the methods. On the method side of things, things get a little bit more interesting. As an example, when you want to go and create a new account, you need to pass in the complex type. So that's where that serialized and deserialized methods becomes important. So what you will do is, is you will expect the user first to fill out the form. Once the user has filled out the form, you can then go ahead and call the serialized method. 
and take the return of the serialized method and then pass that in as the create for the accounts. So all the complexity within the web service can then very quickly and very easily be combined into a single method that you expose from the smart object to basically take or hide um, the complexity uh, within preparing the data before you can actually call the create method um, on that specific web service. So all of that makes it very, very easy then to go and create um, you know, the standard type of applications that you create with the k platform. So it's a whole series of methods that we put together um, using this specific uh, way where we make use of the infrastructure that the endpoint service makes available via the various smart objects that's available. Once you get to this point where you created all these smart objects, you're back into familiar territory. So we can now go ahead and we can go and say, all right, for account, let's go and design a new view. We can go in ahead and say, let's call this view demo one. We'll select list view as the type. It will detect automatically that get account list is the method that's, that, that is the only get list method that's available. And we can now go ahead and say, all right, let's go and on this view include account number, account name, description, industry, and let's say we're also interested in state. Go next. We're happy with the design on that. We can go finish. And as soon as I then run this view, it should be populated with information that comes back directly from the data store that is stored in uh, SQL Azure via the web service that we are registered in the endpoint. So fairly simple now, once you created your smart objects to basically go and create forms around it. So as an example, if I switch over, I've got a couple of forms that's already pre-created to save us some time. Um, so if I switch over to here, we basically have a form that brings back all the uh, basic or basic information about the account. And then as soon as I click on one of the accounts, we can then go ahead and go and load the full details of that specific account and also the associated contact for that account. So very easy now to integrate with third party systems um, that only has web services available as the main set of APIs for those systems. So this should uh, by far save a ton of time when it comes to um, integrating third party line of business systems via web services into existing applications, uh, business applications that you want to create um, forms, workflows and reports around.